Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at direct labor and direct material variances, and to be more specific, price and usage rate and efficiency variance. In another session, I would look at the overhead, direct overhead variance, as well as fixed overhead variance. This lecture, as well as my other lectures, are posted on my website, as well as the PowerPoint slides will be posted there. So before we start the session, we need to be familiar with something called standard cost. So we need to be familiar with what is a standard cost and how does it work? Well, hopefully you are familiar with a food recipe. A food recipe basically tells you this is how much you need of material to make a cupcake. This is how much flour, um, how much yeast, so on and so forth. As long as you mix it together, you follow the recipe, you should have the cupcake. Or if you're making a pizza, you need the dough, the sauce, the cheese, as long as you flour, as long as you mix it together correctly and you bake it as instructed, you will get the pizza. And in theory, if you follow it and practice, it should work. But you know for a fact, if you have a recipe and you follow the recipe exactly, oftentimes it doesn't come out exactly in the shape or taste that you want. And guess what? In the manufacturing world, in the real world, engineers, companies, management, they put together what's called a cost sheet. And what is a cost sheet? A cost sheet is what should go into the product, what type of material, how much time we should spend on that product to have that product finish. So a standard cost or a cost sheet is a form providing the standard quantities, how much we should use in quantities of each input required to produce a unit of output and the standard price. So in the quantities, we have material, and we have direct labor. And for the material, we need to pay money for that. And for the labor, we need to pay money for the labor. So the standard cost sheet tells you how much you should invest or how much you should put into your production. So each unit comes out the same as the other unit. We know for a fact, in theory, this is how it works. In reality, that may not be true. And to be more, to be like even more realistic or a little bit more interesting, what I'm going to try to do in this example, start with an example that we are all familiar with. Let's assume you are starting to deliver, uh, you are starting a, bu a business delivering pizza and a salad. So that's what you do. You make pizza and a salad and you deliver that to working people. Okay, that, that's that's what you want to do. And here are the ingredients for your pizza and your salad. Okay, and the, these are the instructions. Well, obviously, you need labor to do so, so you cannot do this by yourself. Okay, so this is what you're going to be making. Pizza and salad and delivering pizza and salad to people. So here's what's going to happen. So based on this information, I'm going to kind of make up some numbers. Okay, and tell you what, what are your standard. So your direct material standard. So what I did, I added, I added up, I uh, I uh, added up all the weight for the ingredient, and just just make it. I'm just making things up. So you need one pound of material of direct material, and I add up all the prices. Here are all the prices for that pound, and you need for that you need to pay four dollars and eighty eight cent for the material, which is direct material per one pizza is four dollars and 88 cent also for the this is for the direct material for the direct labor you need one hour okay and you can hire someone at ten dollar per hour so it's going to cost you ten dollars so all in all you have direct labor and direct materials of fourteen dollars and 88 cent now keep in mind you're going to be producing high quality pizza and high quality salad that people are willing to pay for it. And you're going to deliver it for that matter. Okay. That's your business. So now let's see, let's work some, work some numbers and see what's going to happen. Let's assume um, you purchased, you purchased and used for that matter and used. So let me just make sure and used 500 pounds for the month of, june 500 pounds of material for the month of june you paid five dollar per pound so to buy the material you paid five dollar per pound you thought you were going to pay 488 based on this based on this uh, this thing that you find online the price was a little bit higher for some of the ingredient you had you happened to pay five dollars that's fine and notice you used that you used it all up and let's also 
let's assume also you produced 400 pizzas and salads so you produce 400 pizzas and salad and we're going to assume those are the same unit pizzas and salad you're producing pizza and salad as one unit you produce 400 meals more or less all right now we need to know what happened in terms of variances did you exactly follow the recipe what happened so i'm going to show you how you will need to solve this problem okay and basically if you if you follow this if you follow this you should be good to go so here's what's going to happen i'm going to show you a three column method first what you do is you have a column called actual okay and under the actual you're going to take your actual quantity times the actual price and it's your actual quantity how much you actually used times the actual price this is column one and i'm going to have column three obviously there's column two in between in column three you're going to be using the standard and i'm going to call this actual quantity ap and actual uh, actual quantity aq and actual price ap you're going to be using standard quantity sq times the standard price sp okay in the third column in the column in the middle here's what's going to happen so when you do variances here's what we're going to do for each item we're going to keep one constant and change the other so what's going to happen in the middle we're going to go with actual quantity which is this item here actual quantity times this item here standard price actual quantity times the standard price so if you set up your formulas like this and you're, i'm going to explain this a little bit further what i did okay so let's try to punch in some numbers and see what we did so for the first column for the let's compare column one and column two let's compare one and two once again notice the actual quantity is the same or what you did is you change the price so any any change between those two column has to do with the price because all what you did is you change the price the quantity is the same all right so let's see what was the actual quantity that you used you used 500 pounds of material and what was the actual price how much did you pay you paid five dollars therefore your actual price your actual column will have two thousand five hundred what was the actual quantity that you used five hundred dollars how much you should have paid you should have paid four dollars and 88 cent so if we take 500 times times 500 times clear 500 times 0.488 that's going to give us 2440 what does that mean well it means the difference between those two and we already know it's unfavorable why because we thought we we're going to pay 488 but we paid five dollars so 2500 minus 2440 we have a 60 dollars unfavorable price variance simply put we paid a little bit more than what we should have a little bit more 60 dollar more it's not a big deal let's move on and compare column two to column three column two already prepared column two 2440 let's look at column three column three is the standard quantity i produced 400 pizzas well for my standard quantity i should have 400 pizzas and and 400 pizzas right and one pound per pizza so i'm going to be using 400 and my standard price my standard price should have been four dollars and 88 cent well what's 400 times 400 times 4.88 that's 1952 wow <laughs> so all right let's see now we're going to compare 1952 to 2440 and find the difference let's find the difference first 2440 minus 1952 and that's 488 dollars is this favorable or unfavorable and i hope you know it's unfavorable because to me 
To make 400 pizzas, we need 400 pounds. What we actually used is 500 pounds. So basically, our employee in the process, they basically lost 100 pounds. Maybe they were making the pizza. It wasn't good. They threw it away. They were making the salad. It didn't come out right. They threw the material away. So there was a lot of wastage. That's what we're saying here. Okay? So this is the usage. Usage. It has to do with quantity. So this is quantity. This is the quantity variance. And this is the price variance. So on both ends, we were not good. So the price, it wasn't that bad, $60. But the usage, we need to train those employees. Those employees, they're either not trained, not supervised. Some, something's wrong. We gave them 500 pounds of material. Based on our recipe, they should be able to make 500 pizzas. They only made 400 pizzas. And I'm assuming here that all... The, the all the material was used if all the material was not used then it, it would have been a little bit different let's assume we only used well let's finish this let's finish this example before we make any assumptions so what is the total variance the total variance the gather is 488 plus 60 and it's 548 dollars unfavorable we're doing something wrong okay especially with the usage variance now, let's assume, just let's let's assume for the sake of the example that we only used, remember we purchased 500, let's assume we only used 450 pounds, then the, the middle column, what we need to do here, the middle column, the middle column, what we do when we do the usage variance, we'll take 400, we would have took, uh, if we used only 450 pounds, we would have used 450 times 4.88 when we're making the comparison between 2 and 3. Okay, so the comparison between 1 and 2 will stay the same because what we purchased is what we purchased. But the usage, if let's assume we only used 450, in this example I said I bought 500 and I used 500. Okay, but if I said I only used 450, when you compare 2 and 3, you would use the usage, what you actually use for the usage comparison. So let's just, okay, good. So that's that. So we did really bad on this. Now for the labor, we need to do the same thing, the same analysis for the labor. See how bad or how good the labor variance is. Well, the material was no good. Let's look at the labor. The labor, we use the same exact concept. We use actual quantity times actual price, standard quantity times the standard price. Okay, so we use the same concept. And I'm gonna abbreviate here. Um, we're gonna be using for column one, actual quantity times actual price column three standard quantity times standard price and in between actual quantity times standard price actual quantity times standard price now what are we going to be what assumption are we, are we going to be making here i'm going to assume that we spend the, the employees that we hired spend 350 hours to make those pizzas times one because we need one hour per pizza and we pay them eight dollars wow 350 times eight two thousand eight hundred so remember when i first started this problem i said i'm gonna hire someone at ten dollars so guess what <laughs> i had a lot of people come in and said i can do this for you i can do this for you I had a lot of i have a lot of supplies so you know what I said let me lower my price let me offer them eight dollars and they took it they took the eight dollars that's fine. What was my standard quantity? My standard quantity was if I needed to produce 400 pizzas, 400 pizzas times one hour per pizza, that's going to give me 400 times $10. I should have paid $10. I am go I was I was supposed to pay for 400 pizzas $4,000. Okay, this is the standard quantity, this is the actual. So this is the actual, and this is the standard. Now let's take the actual 350 times the standard equal to 3,500. We're gonna do the same exact comparison again. We're gonna look at column one and column two. So we have one, we have column one right here, column two and column three. And we're gonna compare column one and column two, and this is gonna give us the rate variance. The rate variance, if we look at, look at the difference, 3,500 minus 2,800, I saved $700. This is favorable variance. And let me, let me, let me take, let's look at it from a different perspective. I saved $2 per hour and they worked for me 350 hours. Therefore, I saved $700.
So on the labor, I got cheaper labor. This could explain, this could explain why my material usage was bad. Okay, because maybe I paid for a cheap labor and I, I'm paying, I paid the price. Now, for the efficiency, how efficient were they? I'm gonna have to compare two and three. So this is the rate, the rate variance, and the other variance, it's the efficiency variance. Again, not usage, we call it efficiency. Efficiency, efficiency. So the difference between 4,000 and 4,000 and 3,500 is 500. That's also favorable. That's also favorable. Okay, that's also favorable. That is $500 favorable because I spend less time than I should have. Well, that's also favorable. So together, we have 1,200 favorable variance when it comes to labor. Wow, they worked fast. These people were trying to impress me. So they work fast. That could also explain, because they work fast, that could also explain the problem with the usage. They did work fast, they did work fast, but they wasted a lot of money. So what should I do under those circumstances? Well, I'm gonna ask them to keep working fast. I just we need, I need to cut down on the material usage, make them more efficient for next month. So this is how I, uh, this is how I, uh, analyze my variances. Also, I paid sixty dollar more. That's my fault. You know, I'm the owner. I'm the one who made the purchases. So maybe I need to find something cheaper. Okay. Now this is basically how what you could use, how you can use this. Now I'm going to go ahead and work another example, just to kind of um, just to f for for illustration purposes. So let's assume we have the following standard. We have we are making frames and direct material. We need four pounds. And the, the, the cost, the input cost for us is 55 cent. So it's gonna cost us material per frame 222. We need to put the frame together 0.05 of an hour real quick. We're gonna have to pay someone $20. So uh, $20 times 0 0.05, it's gonna cost us $1 in direct labor. So this is what we're gonna be producing, this frame right here. So let's take a look at what we have here and what we can do. And again, what you should do here, you should go with column one, column two, and column three. So you know, so see if you could see if you can see if you can solve this problem. So what happened is this: the standard cost, the standard cost for us, for the sake of this example, the standard cost was uh, four pound at fifty-five cent per pound, two twenty. Okay, we happen to produce eighty thousand pounds. Let, let's do this real quick. So let me just go through column one, column two, and column three. For this example, column one, column one, actual quantity. Oh, well, let's let's since we have column three readily available, so we produce eighty thousand frame, and it should it should cost us it should cost us uh, if eighty thousand frame. We use four pound per frame, uh, four pound per frame, uh, eighty thousand frames times four pounds. Mm, that's three. How many? How many pounds is this? Times four equal to three hundred and twenty thousand. Times point five five. That's equal to. Let me just do this real quick. Three hundred and twenty-two thousand pound times point five five. That's one hundred and seventy-six thousand. So standard quantity times standard price. It should have been three hundred and twenty-two thousand times fifty-five pennies, which it should be one hundred and seventy-six thousand. Um, what we actually use is 300 actual pound used, 328, so let's just put the formula again, actual quantity times actual price, actual quantity is 328,000 times 0. 0.6, times 0. 0.6, so this is going to be 196,800 dollars, so this is the column one, the actual. And in the middle, what's going to happen is, in the middle, we're going to have actual quantity, which is 328,000 pounds times the standard price, which is 55 pennies, and that's equal to $180,400. Now, all we have to do is compare column 1 to column 2, okay? Which is, what do we call this? We call this the price variance. The price variance, we already know we paid a little bit more. We know we, know we already paid a little bit more. What's the difference between... What's the difference between column one and column two? 196,800 minus 180,400, 16,400, 16,400, and that's unfavorable. 
and I, we already know this, okay? We already know this. Uh, and let me just show you this real quick. This is actual quantity times standard price. If you take those two formulas, what you can do, you can factor out the actual quantity. You can factor out the actual quantity. So actual quantity times the difference in the price. Standard price minus actual price, okay, which is 0 0.05. 0 0.05 times the actual quantity, 328,000. So this is basically a shortcut to this, okay? So if you take 328,000 pound times 0 0.05, will give you 16,400. This is the price. The usage variance, let's see if we use more or less. Let's first find the difference between the two. 180,400 minus 176,000. That's 4,400. That's 4,400. We were supposed to use 320,000 pound. We actually used 328. That's unfavorable. Okay, because remember, remember that the 55 pennies is constant in this, in this. So, so we we change the other one. Notice here, if we take actual quantity times standard price minus standard quantity times standard price, we can factor out the standard price. Standard price, if we factor out the standard price, it's actual quantity minus the standard quantity. Okay, so we find the difference in the quantity times the standard price. It's going to give us 4,400 also on favorable. So let's take a look at the solution. So this is basically what we are talking about here. Actual quantity times actual price, standard quantity times the standard price, and actual quantity times the standard price in the middle. The difference is unfavorable and unfavorable for both. The price difference is unfavorable and the efficiency or the usage is unfavorable. unfavorable. Now let's take a look at the labor. The labor cost, the labor cost is 0 0.05 per frame times $20. It's going to cost us $1 per frame. We produced 80,000 frame. It should cost us, that's easy, $80,000. Actual hour work, 4,400. Average cost, we paid on average $18. Okay, let's do this. This is column one, the actual, actual quantity times actual labor price. Actual quantity, which is 4,400 hours we spent times we paid actually $18. This is the column one. Column three. The standard quantity we should have you we should have have spent four thousand hour because we produce four thousand frame, and we should have paid twenty dollar per labor time, which is uh, four thousand times twenty is is uh, eighty thousand. So this is column three. Now what we have to do is is uh, uh, find the difference between column one and column two, and it's going to give me the price variance, and the difference between column two and column three, it's going to give me the efficiency variance. So I'm going to have take actual quantity times standard labor price, actual quantity 4,400 times the standard price, times the standard price, which is $20. That, that gave me 8,000, 88,000. So if I compare 88,000 to 79,200, I have a favorable variance of, of 8,800. And I should know this. I'm, it's going to be favorable. Why? Because I saved $2 I saved two dollar per per hour. I saved two dollar per hour because I, I thought I was gonna pay twenty. I paid eighteen. Okay, I saved two dollar per hour. Okay, times they work for me four thousand four hundred hours. Therefore, I saved that much. Now, once again, let me show you the formula that I showed you earlier. Maybe here it's clearer. Notice if I take those two formulas. Okay, if I take this formula and this formula, what I can do, I can factor out. Notice. The um, the actual quantity is a common between the two. If I take the actual quantity times the the standard price minus the actual price, twenty minus eighteen gives me two, and the actual quantity was four thousand four hundred four thousand four hundred. I have a variance of eight thousand eight hundred, and it's favorable. Okay. Now let's compare column two to column three. I already have column two, column three, standard quantity times the standard price, and I find the difference, and it's 8,000. Is it favorable or is it unfavorable? Well, I was supposed to use 4,000 hours to produce those 80,000 frame. I I actually incur 4,800. It means the, 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 the variance is unfavorable by 8,000. Once again, let me show you how, how another way to look at this formula. We have this formula minus this formula. 
if we have this formula minus this formula, what's what's common between the two is standard price. So if I take the standard price, factor it out times the difference between, because we're subtracting those two. Um, is, uh, so I took the actual quantity minus standard quantity, and the difference between them is 400, and the standard price is 20. That's going to give me $8,000. That's unfavorable. That's unfavorable. Overall, what does that mean? What does that mean? It means when it comes to to the uh, to the labor, I got a cheaper labor, two dollar cheaper, but they were not efficient. Again, I, I I hired I hired cheap labor. So overall, my labor is inefficient. Uh, I'm sorry, my my I saved eight hundred dollar on my labor, but for my usage, big mistake, big mistake. That labor wasn't good. Okay, because my material my material variance was really bad. So overall. My, if I take overall variance, 20,800 minus, which is negative, and I saved 800 on the labor, I'm still down $20,000 on this project. Not good at all. But this is, this is how you break down um, the direct material and the direct labor variance, which is a topic you will see in your managerial accounting as well, cost accounting, as well as on the CPA exam, as well on the CMA exam. If you have any questions, any comments, by all means, email me or see me in class. If you're studying for your CPA, study hard. It's worth it.